Any rebels out there? <laughs> Any rebels? Yeah, rebels with the cause. You're like, fi finally, this is the church for me, a church that embraces rebels. I found, I found my church home. Wait, I'm gonna ask us to do something a little different. Again, we're starting this new series, Rebels with the Cause. It's gonna be uh, through 1 Thessalonians. We're gonna take a chapter a week, so it's gonna be over the next uh, five weeks. I don't normally ask you uh, to do this, but I wanna do this throughout this series. Uh, and I'm gonna ask, if you're able to, uh, and you say, yeah, Pastor Dan, you just had us take a seat. I know, I know. But in the honor, in the honor of the reading of God's word, uh, I'm gonna invite you, if you're able to, to stand one more time. And I just wanna read over you uh, chapter one of 1 uh, Thessalonians. And so receive this today, church. Paul, Silas, and Timothy, uh, to the church of the Thessalonians, uh, in God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, grace and peace to you. We always thank God for all of you and continually mention you in our prayers. We remember before our God and Father your work produced by faith, your labor prompted by love, and your endurance inspired by hope in our Lord Jesus Christ. Can we give him praise, church, this morning? It's good, but we're not done yet. We're not done yet. For we know, brothers and sisters, loved by God, that he has chosen you, you're chosen, church, because our gospel came to you not simply with words, but also with power, with the Holy Spirit and deep conviction. You know how we lived among you for your sake. You became imitators of us for the Lord. And so you became a model to all the believers in Macedonia and Achaia. The Lord's message uh, rang out from you, not only in Macedonia and Achaia, your faith in God has become known everywhere, Paul says. Therefore, we do not need to say anything about it. For they themselves report what kind of reception you gave us. They tell how you turned to God from idols to serve the living and true God and to wait for his son from heaven whom he raised from the dead, Jesus who rescues us from the coming wrath. Church, can we give one more praise for Jesus who rescues us from the coming wrath. Praise, praise the Lord. Amen, amen. All right, awesome. Now turn to your neighbor and say, you're a rebel, and then you can have a seat again. There you go, you're a rebel, you're a rebel. <laughs> you're a rebel, like, I like this church. They, they like like rebels in this place. So this is good. Rebels with the cause. So uh, rebels with the cause. Well, I want you to hear this. Uh, you are rebels uh, and you have a cause and, and it's spreading the gospel of Jesus Christ in Canton uh, and, and beyond. And so uh, when, I, when I read these, re, read these words of uh, the apostle Paul uh, to the Thessalonians, I, re, I really think of you and I want to celebrate you this morning. As again, he says, remember before our God and Father, your work produced by faith, uh, your labor prompted by love and uh, your endurance inspired by hope in our Lord uh, Jesus Christ. Because you are not a normal church. You really aren't a normal church. In a global pandemic, you agreed to start a second worship service. That is not normal. <laughs> In a global pandemic, you agreed to do a capital campaign. You raised $1.1 million during a global pandemic. That is not normal, church. That is not normal. And then in a global pandemic, you agreed to embrace a new ministry vision for the future. I want you to know, church, that is not normal. You are crazy. You're rebels with the cause, and I absolutely love uh, being, being, your, being your pastor. And so this, uh, this series, it couldn't have come at a better time. God's timing is always uh, so perfect as we look at the uh, Thessalonians. Now, uh, Thessalonia is actually still in existence. It's one of the major cities uh, over there in Europe, and you can actually visit uh, it today. Uh, Paul went there because it was a major city, and he wanted to spread uh, the gospel there. And these Thessalonians, they received uh, the good news, as we just read in chapter one. And they were rebels with the cause because, Jesus, because Paul taught them that Jesus, Jesus was the king, not Caesar. 
So in that day, Rome was ruling, Caesar was king, and Paul taught them, no, Caesar's not the king, Jesus is king, and they embraced that. I mean, they were rebels against the government, and they lived among Jews who did not believe Jesus was the Messiah, and they believed that Jesus was the Messiah, and they lived among Greeks who believed that there are all these Greek gods, and they said, no, 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 those are not the gods. Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And so these Thessalonians, I mean, they were rebels with a cause, and they made a tremendous impact in their world in the first century. And today, Canton Nazarene Church, you are the same way. I celebrate you today because you're rebels with a cause and you're making a difference in the 21st century in Canton and beyond. And I'm gonna share more about that in a few moments, but I'm just fired up this morning because Paul was fired up when he wrote Thessalonians. In fact, because they were under such great persecution because of the gospel, Paul and Silas actually had to flee for their lives. So when you read the opening verse, you're like, Paul, Silas, and Timothy, what's the deal? Well, Paul and Silas went to spread the gospel, Timothy. They had to flee for their lives because of the persecution, because of their rebellious ways and following Jesus. And then Paul thought for sure, because of all the persecution, that that church in Thessalonica, that, that, that it had to have faltered, that their faith had to have failed. I mean, I mean under such persecution, there's no way that they could thrive. So Timothy goes and he checks on the people in Thessalonia. Well, Timothy comes back and he reports that the people in Thessalonia that Paul had preached to, they're not only alive, but they are thriving. They are spreading the gospel like, like no other people. And so that got Paul fired up. I mean, he was so fired up. So he writes this letter to communicate with them and just tell them how much he loves them, how much he's encouraged by them. And so that's the whole setting of this letter. That's why we have 1 Thessalonians. Now, if you never knew that about 1 Thessalonians, that should really help you as you read this, understand the context of the whole thing. Like, Paul is fired up. He is so excited about this church. And uh, again, I am so, so excited about, about our church and just where we're headed in the future. And and more to, more to come on that uh, in a moment. But that leads me to what I really wanna talk about today, and that's growth. That, that what people really desire uh, in life is, is to grow. I, you know, we wanna see our church grow. I mean, we wanna see ministries we're involved with grow. Uh, you wanna see your marriage relationship grow. You wanna see uh, your family grow. You want kids and grandkids, right? You, you wanna grow at work. You, know, you want opportunities for advancement in athletics. You wanna grow and become a better player, whatever you're doing, or band, or, or art, or whatever your passion is. I mean, don't you wanna grow? I, like when, you, when you're growing, you feel excited. Uh, you, you feel f fulfilled, and, and that's why God has actually made us to grow. In fact, the doctrine of entire sanctification, which, you know, holiness, the church of the Nazarene preaches, it's all about growing. That it's not just, you know, one day you accept Jesus as your Savior and ask him to forgive you of your sins. No, that's important. But after that, there's this process of lifetime growth that you grow more and more like Jesus. Like God has never done working on you. God has never, help, never done helping you grow. And that's, that's important because you feel fulfilled and, and you feel happy when you're growing. If you're not growing, you just kind of feel stagnant and you're not happy. And that's, you know, honestly why there's some people that are very miserable and not happy because they quit growing. All right, they quit growing and they're not seeing any progress in their life. And so we've been on this journey. Again, if you're a first time guest or you're watching online for the first time, uh, we've been like on a three year journey. I, I, like we've been on a train and with this new ministry vision for the future. And we've stopped some along the way at uh, different points. And, and kind of today, uh, we're, we're making a stop. We're getting off the train. We're stretching our legs. We're breathing in the fresh air and we're visiting a place called Grow. A place called growth because that's where we are uh, as a church. And, and again, so excited to share uh, more, more about that. So the question is, well, well, how do you grow? You know, how did these Thessalonians grow? I mean, how did they grow under such great persecution from the Greeks and the Romans and the Jewish people and their family members and, and all these? I mean, these, these people obviously grew. Well, well how, did, how did they grow? And how do I grow, Pastor Nan, in and, and, and areas of my life? And Paul really gives us three secrets. I mean, there. You can almost skim over them in the text here, but, but there's really three secrets to growth that, that Paul gives to us. And again, it's beyond worldly advice. This is, this is Holy Spirit advice on, on how, how we grow. So how do you grow? And there's really three secrets that I wanna share with you. And secret number one is this, uh, that growth uh, takes faith. Growth takes faith. Again, we read in, in verse three, we remember before our God and Father your work 
produced, so they were producing work, they were growing, your work produced by faith. It's the first secret. Well, why, why faith, Pastor Dan? Because at the core of faith is risk. Risk is at the core of faith. If you want to grow in any area of life, you have to take risks. You have to take chances. You can't stay the same in a comfort zone, right? So I am very good at cooking ribs. I mean, I'm pretty good at, I have a Traeger smoker at home. I mean, I've got a process that I follow, kind of, you know, hone this thing in, and I can cook some ribs. But I said to myself, I gotta grow. I can't stay stagnant in my rib cooking. I mean, I need to grow. So I went ahead and did some research and I took a risk this weekend and tried a whole new recipe, a whole new approach to cooking these ribs. I mean, I took a risk. It's a big risk. And so I'm in this process. I mean, it's hours and hours and hours. These ribs, they come out. And I kid you not, I have elevated my game I have grown when it comes to rib cooking because I cook the best ribs that I've ever cooked in my life. Church is excited. I don't know online you're excited too. I I want some of those ribs, Pastor Dan. I'm not kidding. Even my wife came up and said, I kind of agree with you, Dan. Those are the best ribs you have ever cooked. And I thought, to, I thought to myself, this is the sermon. You know, If I would have just stayed content with where I was in my rib cooking ability, if I wouldn't have taken a risk, would have never grown, but I, but I grew. And here's the crazy thing about churches. In 2019, Lifeway Research, they did, they did a study, and they found out in 2019, just three years ago, that 4,500 churches closed their doors. Okay, they not only quit growing, they died. <laughs> and if you research this, every year, thousands of churches close. And so the crazy thing about this is that, that, that faith, it's required to grow. Like churches that should have faith, like that's what we should be experts in, faith, Like churches don't have it and they die. The very churches that should have faith and should be growing, they die because they don't have faith. And you say, why, Pastor Dan? Well, because they have belief. They have belief. They have belief. So I imagine the 4,500 churches that closed, they believed all the right things. They believed that God's the Father, that Jesus is the Son, the Holy Spirit, third person of the Trinity. They believed in the gospel message. I mean, they believed, you know, all the right things, but they still died. And the reason was is because they didn't have faith. (laughs) Because faith takes risks. Faith is willing to change. Faith is willing to do things in a new way. Faith is willing to say, you know what? I'm not only gonna believe what Jesus says, but I'm actually gonna take a risk and do what Jesus says. Like, I'm going to go share my faith. I'm going to go invite someone to church. I'm going to give my first tenth to God. I mean, I'm going to take a risk and actually do what Jesus says to do. (laughs) But when churches stop taking risks, when they stop exercising their faith, that's when they die. They quit growing. And they say, well, I believe the right things. Even like John 3.16. You know, that's a very famous verse. I love John 3.16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. And see, the problem with this is people pull that verse out of that section of scripture, and that's the only thing they say. But they don't understand the context in which that was spoken. The context is Jesus is having a conversation with a religious man named Nicodemus, and Jesus basically says to Nicodemus, you've got to take a risk. You've got to surrender. You've got to sacrifice everything you know. The comfort zone of being this religious leader, you've got to walk away from that, all your friends. You've got to take on me as your Lord and Savior. I mean, you've got to be born again. I mean, he goes on and on about all of this risk about faith, and then after that, that's when John comments on this conversation and talks about, you know, hey, whoever believes. But the context of this is not just belief, it's faith. It's making a radical sacrifice, a radical, I mean, taking a huge risk. For Nicodemus, that was everything. (laughs) And Jesus says, hey, that's how you're born again. That's how you grow. I remember I was so scared the first time that God really talked to me and asked me to invite Jesus to be my savior. I was in a church like this. I had peers with me and the altar call came and the pastor said, anyone that wants to give their life to Jesus, slip out of your seat, come down to the altar and pray. That was a huge risk because I had friends. I wondered what they thought, what other people thought. My heart was pounding. I mean, it was, it was just going a thousand miles an hour. It was risk to step out, to come down and admit that I was a sinner and that I needed the grace of God. But I wanna tell you this. I could have just sat in my seat and believed that Jesus is the Savior. That wouldn't have changed me. 
But when I took my belief and put it into practice and took a risk and had faith and came down, that is when God, I was born again. I was changed forever. <laughs> and I realized, well, that's where growth happens. That's where growth happens. And so Paul's saying, hey, you Thessalonians, your work was produced by faith. You took risks. I mean, you were willing to risk a personal relationship with your family, with your friends, with these, with these Greeks, with the Jews. I mean, with Caesar. I mean, you were willing to risk it all. And that's what helped you to grow. That's what helped you to produce. Listen, everybody, <laughs> you will not grow unless you take risks. <laughs> you have to have faith. You have to take risks. It's the first secret to growth. But what's gonna fuel taking risks? I mean, because taking a risk, it can be really draining. I mean, something has to fuel that. It's much easier just to kind of sit in the lazy boy in your living room and have a Diet Coke and look out the window and watch football. I mean, why would you really wanna get uncomfortable and take a risk? Well, it's the second secret to growth because growth takes love. Growth takes love. I think love is what fuels faith. Love is what really motivates us, inspires us to take risks. In fact, it's not just love for ourselves or, or maybe even love for God, but it's really love for other people. Because I can grow, really, I can grow, I can grow, I can feel fulfilled, I can grow, take care of myself, and be okay. I, I can do that. <laughs> but really, what it's about is growing beyond yourself. It's about loving other people so much that you're willing to grow for them so that you can give to them because we really grow so that we can give. Growth isn't just about us. I mean, growth is so we can give and that's what makes us feel fulfilled. See, we wanna grow so we can give. And that's why Paul says this. He says, your labor prompted by love. See, Paul mentions love and he mentions labor and he says these are connected. It was prompted by love, this labor. And that word labor, it's just not work. It's, it's actually a picture of striking something so hard that you feel like you can't strike it one more time. It's to the point where you're exhausted, like you're swinging this thing and striking with everything. You're like, I cannot swing this one more time. I am simply exhausted. That's what that word means, labor. And Paul says, I know you felt like giving up, Thessalonians. I know there are times where like you were growing, you're like, this is too much, I can't do this anymore. I want to give up. But what kept you going? Paul says what prompted your labor to keep swinging one more time, it was love. <laughs> you know, as we've been on this, uh, this journey, this, this ministry vision for the future, I mean, honestly, I can't tell you how many times I felt like giving up. When I was, I, I honestly, I just got to the point where I was so exhausted, like I'd swung so many times, I, I just didn't feel like I could swing again. <laughs> In one, one instance, uh, I remember in particular, uh, I, I, was, I was actually mowing the grass and uh, I, I was on my lawnmower and, and I'm, I'm talking to God, I'm like, God, this is so hard. Like trying to grow and trying to, to move our, our, our church into this ministry, visit, it's so difficult. I don't know if I can keep going. I just feel like, I just, let's just stay where we are. Let's not worry about, you're trying to press on. And, 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 and in those moments, you know, God spoke to me. I know the lawnmower, it's not like a, typically a spiritual place, but my lawnmower became a spiritual place as I was mowing the grass. And, and God just began to kind of remind me of, of some people. Remind me of some people. Uh, I, I thought about people from the past that, that have impacted my life here at the church. I mean, there, there's been some people in this church that have just truly impacted my life. People like uh, Eldon Haberstock and um, people like Nancy Shantz. I, I remember Nancy, she was in a wheelchair and uh, like that's the only way I really knew her that uh, before that she wasn't obviously, but she had situation me medical. And I just remember her so faithful being here in that wheelchair. And I mean, Nancy, just, just her presence coming to church in a wheelchair and how hard it was. Like she inspired me you know, just, just every week that I, I saw her. I remember, you know, um, a, a pastor long and, and he just poured into my life. I mean, just what, what a great man. And uh, I remember Dave Brown and uh, Jean, Jeannie Williams and, just people that were so encouraging to my ministry and just supported me so much. I mean, I, I, I was just thinking about them as I'm driving on this lawnmower. And then I started thinking about people in the present, about my friends and people that watch online and you know, all the way on the West Coast. I mean, just across the country now. And, and, and I thought about you guys and I thought about my kids and my in-laws and my mom and dad and my wife. And I, I just began thinking about all the people now that, 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 
that are counting on me and like I'm counting on you. And I started thinking about the people in the future that, that will be impacted by the ministries of the church. And, and as I'm driving this lawnmower, I'm just, I'm overcome by, by love. I mean, th this love is just filling my soul and, and, and I'm like, I can't quit, I can't give up. I, I was so overwhelmed with love, so I'm crying and my neighbor's like, hey Dan, is there something wrong? I'm like, nah, just the allergies, it's just the, you know, the pollen's really kicking up as we're cutting the grass. But I was just so filled with, with love and I'm like, like, God, I can't quit. I can't stop now, I, I just gotta keep swinging. I, I, I gotta keep swinging because I love. Isn't it amazing what you will do for people that you love? I mean, when you're about ready to hang it up, call it quits, isn't it amazing when you think of the people you love, how it'll prompt you to keep, to keep, to keep laboring, to keep, keep swinging one more time. And that's what growth takes. If, if you wanna grow, you will get to a place, I guarantee you, you, that you will be so weary and tired, you will wanna quit. And Paul says, listen, here's the secret to keep, to keep going. It's love. <laughs> I mean, remember the people. Remember the people in the past, in the present, in the future. You have to keep growing. You have to keep going. And, and I praise God for this secret of growth. There's nothing like love. But again, love, you have to be inspired to love. And, and I think this is the final secret to growth, that growth takes hope. It takes hope. I, I love what Paul says here. In your endurance, why would you keep going? Well, you've been inspired by hope in our Lord Jesus Christ. That when we think of our Lord Jesus Christ, when we think that all, all that he has done for us, I mean, it inspires us to hope. I mean, I mean hope is, is something that we all need. I think in, in many ways, like the church is, is missing out on, on how important hope is. And maybe the world's actually grabbed a, a hold of this more than the church has. It's a, like we need inspired by hope. If you watch American Idol or America's Got Talent, you know, it's, it's just not about these people that are singing songs or doing these acts. I mean, they're all people that have stories and they've been bullied or they've been, they've been beat down or told they weren't good enough or, or whatever. And they, 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 they stayed their course and they end up on this show and the, and the stories are so powerful. And like you're watching these people sing or play a saxophone or do this or that. And you I moved to tears because these people, they're just inspiring me. The hope that they've inspired me with because they're so passionate about what they're doing. And, and in so many ways, like I believe that the church, um, we, we've just lost the importance of hope because it inspires people. And trust me, church, if we're not inspired, the people we're trying to lead to Jesus won't be inspired either. We need to be inspired by the hope that Jesus Christ offers. And when we are inspired, we will go out and inspire other people to follow Jesus. You know, it's not just about knowledge. It's, just not, it's not just about content. It's about how you deliver the content. And it all comes through the hope that we're inspired by. I, th I, think it, I think it really matters, you know. Um, th there have been times when, you know, I've been criticized, my preaching has been criticized, and uh, so one, one time this person was criticizing uh, my preaching, and they're saying, Dan, Pastor Dan, you, like, you're just, you just, you're way too inspirational. You're like, you, you just try to connect to the heart too much. I'm thinking, oh, but, but like, they said, I want to go deeper. Like, I need a deeper preacher. I, I want to go deep, and like, if you're, if you're not around the church or new to the church, that, you're like, what are you talking about, Pastor? If you've been around the church, you've heard that phrase. You may, may have used that phrase. I'm not making fun of you, but I want to go deeper. I want to go deep. What it means is like, it's basically knowledge, right? It's knowledge. I want to get deeper into the scriptures. And um, I, I just, I looked all the way through, I, I looked through the New Testament this week. I'm like, did Jesus ever say that he wanted to go deeper? Like, that's what inspired him? Did Jesus ever say that? And I couldn't find it anywhere. And, and what, I, what I found, what inspired Jesus, uh, I found it in John 4, 34, Jesus said, my food, like, like what fills me up, my food, said Jesus, it's to do the will of him who sent me and to finish his work. I mean, what, like what fired Jesus up, what, what inspired Jesus was to do the will of the Father. And that's what inspired people. Like when Jesus went out and did what his Father said to do, that's what inspired people to follow him. I mean, that, that's where the inspiration was. It wasn't just all this knowledge that Jesus had. And like, I think we got a lot of deep churches I mean, we got some churches, I mean, they are so deep. I mean, they are so deep, like they're so deep in a hole that they are no earthly good to anyone on the surface of the earth. I mean, that's kind of what I think. They're just so deep. You're like, wow, that's harsh, Pastor Dan. Well, that's just true. Because people aren't looking for knowledge. They're looking for a hope. And the hope is Jesus Christ. And they're looking for a life that's inspired by Jesus and Christ. And that actually does the things that Jesus said to do. <laughs> That's what they're looking for. And so church, man, a secret to growth 
it's not just knowledge. And again, I'm all about, I, I, trust me, I have two master's degrees. I was academic, all American and everything I ever did. And so I've studied hard. But the classroom, listen, is not the real world. <laughs> the real world is a lot different than the classroom. So it's okay. I mean, it's good to study the scriptures. But listen, what inspires people is to do the will of the Father, not just spout off all of our knowledge that we have uh, about the scriptures. So I wanna share with you the hope that I have uh, from last week's vote. Uh, the hope that I have is, uh, is just like overwhelming this morning because 95% um, approved the renovation. So again, if you're a guest, we took a vote last week about remodeling our worship center and restrooms and foyer. It's uh, driven by this ministry vision for the future. And 95% approved uh, the renovations. And we had 109 yeses and uh, six no's. And so we had tremendous support, tremendous uh, unity for the, the renovations of the worship space. Uh, and then the second one, uh, to approve a, a $2.2 million project, we had 86% approve uh, the financing of a $2.2 million project. We had 99 yeses and uh, 16 no's. And someone was like, man, I wish we would have had one more yes. And I was like, no, I like the 99 because it reminds me of the parable Jesus taught, like the 99 sheep that are found and there's one lost. And like that just inspires me. Like there's one more, right? We gotta reach for Jesus. So I love the fact that it's, that it's 99. But we had an overwhelming uh, just response last week and in support of the ministry vision for the future. So I just think, you know, everyone online, everyone in the room, I think we should just praise the Lord uh, for, for just that awesome. I mean, it's, it's exciting. It gives me hope. It gives me hope that, that again, we're, we're exercising faith and we're ex exercising love and we're, we're exercising hope. And it, it's just truly, truly uh, inspirational. And, and, and I'm so glad that uh, everyone uh, just participated last week. Now, obviously, um, some folks, you know, voted no, and, and you will never have unanimous in, in any kind of vote. I just, just so, so trust me, that, that will never, uh, never, be, never be the case. But as I've said uh, in, in the weeks past, you know, differences of opinions are healthy, but the vision is a choice. And so we're not going to choose the vision, church. And so what I'm asking uh, everyone to do that voted yes is to, to reach their hand out to those that voted no, and everyone that voted no reach their hand out to those that voted yes. And church, let's just be unified, right? Let's be unified as we move uh, forward uh, with the ministry vision for the future. And again, what is it, Pastor Dan? Well, it's outward focus. That's number one. Again, we have the Fatherhood Festival coming up uh, just in a couple weeks. I was so encouraged that Governor DeWine for the state of Ohio uh, officially signed a document that said June, the month of June, is officially uh, a fatherhood month. It's, it's a month to embrace fatherhood and to help uh, encourage fathers. And so uh, we're just excited to be a, a church partner with this kingdom ministry that's going to happen uh, in Canton, Ohio over Father's Day week. And I'm going to actually make a video that'll uh, help you know how to, to sign up to volunteer and, and to be a part of that special weekend. But again, Darren Gray's coming into town and uh, many professional athletes and a lot of leaders in the community. community and it's all about uh, fatherhood and making an impact spiritually uh, for the fathers in our community. So again, this is, this is perfect for outward focus. And then again, generosity. We just want to keep on giving, give every, give our best to God in every area of life uh, so we can grow and then multiple services. So more people can worship, invite and serve. And, and finally technology, just to, to make sure that we're using technology to share Christ and to help people grow uh, in Christ. And this is a beautiful vision for the future to rally around, to unify around as the church. So to wrap up here, growth takes faith, love, and hope. So I just want you to imagine for a moment a life void of faith, a life that has no faith, a life that has no love, a life that has, has absolutely no hope. Do you think that kind of life is going to grow? Everybody say no. Do you think that kind of life is going to be fulfilling? Everyone say no. Do you think that kind of life is gonna be exciting to live? Everybody say no. no. No, I mean, it's not. I mean, if you don't have any of those, that's, that's not the way to go. But now let's flip it. And let's just imagine. Imagine a life full of faith. I mean, a life that's willing to take risks for Jesus. I mean, I mean, a life that's just willing to do what Jesus said to do and take a chance. I mean, I, I mean, imagine a life that's full of love for God and love for others and just, just a life that is so full of love. That, I mean, imagine that kind of life and imagine a life just full of hope. I mean, uh, an, an inspirational hope that inspires other people to serve Jesus. It, it, it was so cool. I mean, after the first service, uh, there was a young man that was, he was a first time guest. In fact, Bill Offer 
Buffanier was reaching out to him, talking to him, and then I got to talk to him. His name's Evan. He attended children's church here when I was a children's pastor. This was a long time ago. He's like, I remember you as a children's pastor. And, and he said, he kind of told his story and said just how much God spoke to him this, this morning in the first service and um, said he wanted to come back. And so I got his name and his, and his number and going to reach out to, to Evan this week. And, and, uh, and I was just thinking as I was talking to him, like, this is it. Like, this is faith. This is, this is love. And this is hope. Now, imagine a life like that. Is that the kind of life that's going to grow? Everybody say yes. <laughs> I mean, is that the kind of life that's going to be fulfilling to live? Everyone say yes. Is that the kind of life? Oh, we got the kids in here now. Is that the kind of life that's going to be exciting to live? Everybody say yes. There you go. That fired up. Yeah. That was the Thessalonians. That's why Paul was so excited to write this letter. I mean, these folks were willing to have faith and love and hope. They were rebels with a cause. <laughs> that was the Thessalonians. May that be Canton Nazarene Church for the next decade to come. May that be us. So I want to read these words over you one more time. And then we're going to bring some of the kids up uh, this morning and some of the workers. And just to kind of remind us of why we're doing what we're doing. Like the next generation and, and how important they are. And how important it is for us to grow as a church. And to have faith and to have love and to have hope. And embrace these secrets, right? We always thank God for all of you and continually mention you in our prayers. We remember before our God and Father, your work produced by faith, it's a secret to growth. Your labor prompted by love, it's a secret to growth. <laughs> and your endurance inspired by hope, it's a secret to growth. In our Lord Jesus Christ, we are made for more. We're made for more. Just like the Thessalonians were, so are we. So I wanna invite the kids uh, to come up here. So Pastor Josh and all the, all the leaders, you can bring, bring everybody up and um, we're gonna bring, bring these kids up. And, and as we're doing that, again, the first step, everybody, the first step is putting your hope in Christ. And um, 